I want to give you my take on calibrating the TV hoping to improve the picture quality. And the first thing that I want to say is that I have absolutely no idea how a reference picture is supposed to look like, but I can still tell you and warn you that you shouldn't expect to calibrate the TV and then open every single game and everything's gonna look wonderful. You don't have to worry about HDR settings because the content is messed up. The games are messed up. So a calibration is not gonna fix that. You still have to lower the black level and change the tone mapping and do all of that, okay? So it's not a thing that, okay, I'm just gonna pay for this. It's gonna be set and forget. I don't have to worry about it anymore because the content is, is messed up. Okay, and there's no communication between the game and the TV to set the tone mapping options. That's just not happening, okay? But that doesn't mean that I wouldn't recommend uh, you to calibrate the TV. Actually, I would recommend it. And I'm going to explain you what I would like to learn to improve the picture quality. Because I'm not going to pay a professional calibrator. I wouldn't even let anyone do it for free. Somebody uh, offered me the other day, hey, I would do it for free. I would help you to do it. I want to learn how to do it myself, to, to have somebody else doing it, it's not fun for me. <laughs> okay, so I want to learn, I want to learn how to do it. And the other thing I want to say is that the more I learn, I believe that I get closer and closer to what a reference picture would look like. And I'm going to explain you why doing an analogy with music. I believe that profession, even professional calibrators, they are underselling their services sometimes because I've heard that, I heard them say there is personal preference and there is a reference picture. Okay, so reference versus preference. And I disagree and I'm gonna explain you why. So basically, you are never wrong with your liking. Okay, with your preference. So your preference is never wrong. Okay, the thing that is wrong is what you believe is the best. So you believe always that your preference is the best result. Okay, and that's just not the case. So for example, doing an analogy with music, because I am a musician. Okay, that's my area of expertise. I'm a classical guitarist. I'm a guitar teacher. So in music, when you start studying, you like popular music, just loud stuff that has no dynamic, and that's normal, and there's nothing wrong with that. And you should actually enjoy that, okay? Enjoy music. But the more you learn, you're going to end up liking more and more complicated things. You're going to end up liking jazz and classical music. There's no way around it. <laughs> the more you learn, you're going to end up with more complicated things. So at the beginning, it is okay and it is expected that you are going to like and a superly br bright and overly saturated picture. That's normal, okay? But that doesn't mean that that's the best. So in my opinion, what everyone should do and the best for everyone would be to get the most accurate picture and just get used to it because that's the best. That's <laughs> not that is the best. So that's my take on that. So here's what I would like to learn to improve the picture quality on this uh, LG C1. On SDR, I'm going to start with SDR. I never use SDR for anything. <laughs> never SDR is a better option than HDR. Just as a sample on whole display, just the picture quality of this LG C1, but I love black frame insertion, okay? OLED Motion Pro. So when you use black frame insertion, the picture, be the picture becomes darker, okay? So we need to increase the brightness of the picture. So on HDR, when you use OLED Motion Pro, there has to be an adjustment for that EOTF tracking because the TV is going to under track the EOTF, the the PQ, so the, the, the curve that the TV has to, the luminance curve that the TV has to, to follow in order for the picture to look good. So because there is no adjustments on the EOTF when you use black frame insertion, OLED Motion Pro on this LG C1, 
the best option is to use an SDR or SDR to HDR trick just to boost the brightness because as I explained previously with my music and HDR SDR analogy basically HDR has no volume control okay HDR is an absolute so there is a luminance curve to follow it's an absolute there is no volume control you cannot increase the, the overall brightness of the, of the picture if you have a, ref, a reference picture. So on SDR you can. So SDR you can just boost the brightness. That's why SDR is the way to go for black room insertion on this LG C1. And actually the reason is you can release the maximum full screen brightness on this LG C1 on the service menu by turning on module HDR at your own risk and by doing that you should be able to get the best black frame insertion result now the problem is when you do that near black is too dark it's just too dark and it needs calibration so I believe that we can fix that doing a 22 point calibration okay and actually if you're a professional calibrator let me know I would like to learn how to do that so basically I can turn on module HDR on the service menu I can open the games on SDR use OLED Motion Pro High and then calibrate the TV like that so it looks near black the way it's supposed to look so it is not it's not too dark near black and I can take advantage of that full screen brightness power that we can get using that trick so I am very interested in learning how to calibrate a borrow equipment for, from a friend because it, the equipment for calibration is extremely expensive, okay? It is more expensive than the TV. And the software to calibrate is obscenely expensive too, which is one of the main th reasons why I've still, I haven't done it yet because I am okay in spending some money for equipment but not for the software that software is crazy expensive common home for, for LG is just obscene so uh, yeah so I am interested in that getting that the best black frame insertion picture I can get and I am 100% sure the best the best option is gonna be SDR because we can get that full screen brightness and then we just need to do a 22 point calibration to fix that near black and get the best result so basically using OLED Motion Pro the picture looks insane <laughs> it looks like there's no black from insertion on it looks perfectly bright so I am interested on SDR on that so no black from insertion I am absolutely I don't care about SDR not at all because I'm never use it <laughs> I will never use it because HDR is just better <laughs> all the time <laughs> there's no way a a SDR is better than HDR we just need to learn how to fix it I have a video, uh, I'm going to have a link in the description of this video if you want to learn how to fix the HDR gaming mess that we have. I have very good recommendations for that. So now, for HDR, what I would like to learn and the things that I believe would improve the picture quality on HDR, okay? And one thing I would do is measure the actual peak brightness of the TV. So each individual panel has its own capabilities. So all these LG C1s are, you know, the HGIG, for example, is designed up to 800 nits and hard clip at 800 nits. But maybe my individual LG C1 is not capable of 800 nits, and most likely it is not. So it might be capable of 750 nits, okay? So with an instrument, you measure the actual peak brightness of the TV, and then you do a tone mapping curve that's like HGIG and it is hard clipping at the actual peak brightness of the display. Now, a professional calibrator knows that it depends on the content. You cannot measure just a 10% window and assume that's gonna be the maximum peak brightness that the display is gonna give you because when the display is actually displaying content it is going to release a little bit more brightness. So maybe you measure a 10% window and it's going to measure 750, but then on real content, it's actually closer to 800 nits. 
okay so that a professional calibrator would know how to figure that out and what would be the best option so what basically with the calibration you can get a better result than with HGIG okay so that's one improvement that we can expect from calibrating the TV now is that an improvement that you are going to notice like it's going to be like wow now it's a big difference no <laughs> you're not going to see a big difference it's gonna be a small improvement that you might not be able to tell the difference but the other improvements that I would like to have is improve all the tone mapping curves so for example when I use this secret menu you see that I am able to change the tone mapping curve so basically I select tone mapping off here HDR tone mapping off and then I come here to the secret menu and then I select what the game is doing so this game for example is doing 10,000 nits so I select master in peak max ELL 10,000 so the, the TV does tone mapping with a 10,000 uh, target. So these are tone mapping curves that can be improved. And I've seen that in AVS forums. Uh, the calibrators, they actually improve that tone mapping curve. So what is the improvement I'm talking about? Basically, this tone mapping curve, they have a roll off point. So what that means is that the TV is following the EOTF until a point, which is 250 nits, if I remember correctly. And then after 250 nits, it's no longer following the EOTF. It has to roll off because what this is doing, basically, when the content is trying to output 10,000 nits, the TV has to output 800. So because the TV cannot follow the content up to 8 up to 10,000 nits, the TV has to roll off, start to roll off and give you equivalent values. So when the content is trying to output 8,000 nits, then the TV is like, I don't know, 600, 700, something like that. So this roll off points, they can be changed and that would improve the picture quality. How would they change it? What would be the exact value? I don't know. That's what they know. And they can actually improve these options to get a better result. So they can improve 10,000, 4,000, they can do 5,000, they can do whatever. So one thing I would like to do, for example, is I would like to, instead of having here an option for 540, I would like to have an option for 500 because I use a lot uh, on Windows, the SDR, HDR slider, and I know that that H SDR HDR slider is doing max CLL 498. So because it's 498, instead of 540, I would like to have here a, four, a 500 nit uh, option. So what this is doing basically, when the content is trying to output uh, 540, uh, 540, then the TV is going to do 800 nits, the maximum peak brand as it can. So it is like... Uh, tone mapping but the the opposite way the content is going below what the TV can do so the TV can actually push more brightness okay so I would improve that too and for the colors in terms of the colors of course that can be improved but I don't think that's something that I'm going to notice at all no not yet but here's the thing once they calibrate the colors and you get the most accurate colors and you get used to it then if you watch a TV that is not calibrated then you might notice that for sure so that's one of those things I would recommend you if you can to get from the beginning get used to an accurate picture to a to an accurate white balance because that's the best that's the best there is science behind it you can there's no such thing as what you like is going to be best better than the, the, what actually is better <laughs> it's like in music no i like this this song or i like this kind of music hence that is the best yeah it's the best for you <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that but that that is not the best the best is what is the best <laughs> and that's an absolute so that's my opinion and that's what i believe it is so that would be my focus so I am not looking for 
the creator's intent, okay? And that's another thing that I disagree with uh, professional calibrators that all you care about when you calibrate the TV is to get the creator's intent. For example, in movies, I completely disagree with the creator's intent. <laughs> Why? Because they are recording these movies uh, with cameras that can record at 8K, 120 <laughs> frames per second. I'm, I mean, this is there is a red digital cinema camera. It's called the V Raptor, I believe. That thing can record 8K, 120. Okay, <laughs> which we don't have displays for that, but. I completely disagree with these movies being 24 or 30 hertz or even 48 frames per second. That's trash in my opinion. So I completely disagree with the creator's intent, 100%. So yeah, I don't care about the, the, having the creator's intent because I disagree. I don't like film grain. I don't like any of this noisy, you know, post-processing garbage that they add to the, to the movies. And I completely disagree with 30 FPS. <laughs> so I couldn't care less about the creator's intent. I think it's wrong. <laughs> I don't like it. I want the highest frame rate and the highest resolution I can get. Period. If I can get 8K, 8,000 frames per second, I would get that. Give me that. <laughs> it's better. There's no, there's no question about it. There's, in my opinion, there's no such thing as a cinematic look. No. That's what you're used to, but that's not better. The better is the higher, the more pixels you have on the screen, okay? And the faster they refresh, that's the best. There's no question about that. So yeah, I am not thinking on calibrating to get the creator's intent because I disagree with the creator's intent, okay? And with gaming, why do we have settings in games to disable all motion blur and all the garbage that they add to the game? film grain, chromatic aberration, all that crap. If that's the creator's intent, I don't care about the creator's intent. <laughs> okay. So, I believe that calibrating the TV, even if you don't care about the creator's intent, can benefit you and you can actually get a better result by doing that. So, yeah, that's my take. Also, to end the video, we are splitting hairs here. So, if you are thinking on calibrator and calibrating the TV and expecting a huge difference, no. You can you can get like very close to the best result you can get like I would say like 90% at least of the result or more just by using the best settings or the recommended settings that a professional calibrator would offer you just the settings in the regular menus without having to mess around with the colors or doing anything else different like you know uploading a tone map curve or anything like that you can get there uh, so we're just splitting hairs we're looking for you know the absolute best result we can get then yes we can think in in calibrating the two so that's my take let me know your thoughts and opinions and if you have any questions